In this video, we discuss learning outcome number five from lesson 9.1, which is about our options for testing hypotheses about two proportions when the requirements for the critical value method, the p-value method, or the confidence interval method are not satisfied. So just a recap of the requirements. Um, first, we need to have two simple random samples. And then next, we need to make sure that those samples are independent from each other. Or in other words, values from one population aren't somehow related to or naturally paired with values from the other population. So we don't want twins. We don't want uh, like two partners within um, a romantic couple. We don't want um, before and after data. Uh, we want independent data or independent populations um, represented uh, through those samples. So if we've got a simple random sample and the samples are independent from each other and there are at least five successes and at least five failures in each sample. And that can be represented um, symbolically as n times p hat being greater than or equal to five and n times q hat being greater than or equal to five because n times p hat is the number of successes in a sample and n times q hat is the number of failures in a sample. If that last one is satisfied, then it's appropriate to use a normal distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution. Otherwise, we shouldn't use that normal distribution as an approximation, but we could still use the exact binomial distribution in that case. So um, what do we do if those requirements aren't met? Um, first of all, there's nothing that we can do about the first two requirements. If we have a bad sample, it's a bad sample. There's nothing that we can do to salvage the data from a voluntary response or convenience sample. We can do all the data analysis we want, but the results that we obtain from that data analysis will not be generalizable to anyone outside that sample that we're working with. Um, so um, there's nothing we can do about the first two requirements. But for the last requirement, that's the requirement that we have at least five successes and at least five failures. Um, if that's not met, well, there are some things that we can do. For a hypothesis test, if that requirement is not met, we can use what's called Fisher's exact test. This is quite a bit more complicated than the methods that we've discussed. Um, it uses the binomial distribution rather than using that normal distribution as an approximation to the normal or uh, to the binomial distribution. Um, but uh, a lot of Techno technology, excuse me, um, can do this Fisher's exact test for you. So even though the computation um, tends to be more with the Fisher's exact test, um, that's something that we can do if necessary using technology. And that technology would do the computational heavy lifting for us. Um, that is not um, described in detail in our textbook, not so far as I know. Um, but just be aware that there is that option for you if for some reason you need to do a hypothesis test and this requirement is not met, you can look up Fisher's exact test and find out more about how to use this test to test this hypothesis. Now, if you want to construct a confidence interval for the difference between two population proportions, so you're trying to estimate the difference between p sub one and p sub two for two populations, well, then we can use what are called bootstrap resampling methods. Um, those are discussed in lesson 7.4 of our book or section 7.4 of our book, if that last requirement is not met. So we actually can come up with a confidence interval in that case, but we're going to have to make some modifications. Um, we're not going to cover that in this class, at least not during the fall 2020 semester. Um, but if you're interested in how you would construct a confidence interval, in the case when this last, last requirement is not met, you can always look that up in our text in lesson or in section um, 7.4. Um, so that's it. We're not going to do any examples of these. I just wanted you to be aware of what's out there, what your options are if that last requirement is not met. Um, I will see you in the next video where we will talk about um, testing hypotheses about two uh, samples, but this time our hypotheses are going to be about two sample means, or not sample means, um, two population means and the difference between population means as opposed to the difference between two population proportions. That's in lesson 9.2. I'll see you next time.